Hi everyone, my name is Jacob Norris and I'm currently lead environment artist at NVIDIA. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Photoshop action scripts. If you haven't seen Photoshop action scripts before, it's a great way to batch process images or if there's something you do a lot when you're in Photoshop, you can simply save those actions so that you can run them next time as a script. And let me show you what I mean by that. So some of these things that action script can do is similar to what you can do nowadays in Substance Designer or Lightroom if you're going to be batch processing photos. But if there's specific needs within Photoshop that you need for scripting or for batch processing, then this is a great way to do that. Let me just give you a quick example here on the right. I'm going to show Actions. Uh, you can find it by going to Window Actions if it's not coming up on your screen yet. And so under the Actions panel, I have an NVIDIA folder here that I created, and I'm just going to create a new script. And uh, it's similar to as if you were going to create a new layer, it's the same icon. And we'll name this script Test Script. And what it does here is it shows a little recording icon. And so every single action that you make on the screen now is going to be recorded. So even if I make a random selection like this, it's going to be recorded and it shows off to the right now that pops up as set selection. If I hit control J, it's going to duplicate my selection into a new layer above. If I hit control U, I can adjust my lightness, bring down my saturation, and do something like that. And so now I got a funny, weird Harry Potter lightning bolt on the screen here. Maybe I don't like this section, so I'm going to cut that off. Now it's something else. And you see every single action I make, it's, it's recording all that. Whenever I'm done with the process that I want, I'm going to hit stop. And if I open up a new image now, so I'll just drag and drop another image onto the scene here. If I click the top, the top parent name here, test script, the one we created, and hit the play button, it's going to run all those same actions we just did on the other image. And now we've got this same little icon here popping up with uh, that layer on top. Something to be aware of though, if I open up another image, if the image size or settings are different, I'm going to bring this down to 1920 by 1080. All those actions that we ran were at a much larger resolution. So it's not going to be aware that the image is smaller. It's just going to run those same actions in the same screen space that we had before. So if I run that same script, you'll notice actually nothing is showing up anymore. And that's because that that selection that I created is now somewhere off screen because of the new image size that we have. So whenever you're running these scripts, just be aware that it's very dependent upon the settings, the layer names that you have, Say if I come back down here to the set selection and hit record again, I can select one of these layers and it shows that I've selected it, but it has to be layer one. So if I stop this and I rename this to background and select layer two. Now if I play this here, it's not going to be able to find layer one, so it can't select it anymore. There's no layer one available. So you have to be very, very aware that every single action you make is very, very specific to everything in the scene. So that's just something I wanted to warn you about before you start using these action scripts that you need to make sure all your whole environment and your setup is the same each time. There are ways that we can do that. So if we delete this test script, delete this layer that we have here, I'm gonna go ahead and record. Uh, actually, I'm going to stop because I'm recording over this other layout setup I have here. This is another script I created earlier, which actually just adds a, uh, a logo image of NVIDIA onto the picture here. And you see one of the settings was different, and it wasn't able to place something because on my desktop, I recently renamed the NVIDIA logo that I had. Um, so when it went to find that file on my computer, it was no longer available. So something you can do if something like that happens 
it tried to find this image, I can delete that. Delete this selection. And if I go back above here, because underneath is where originally that uh, place the logo was, I can hit record again. And now I'll drag and drop the logo into this image and hit enter. And so now it's placed the correct image name. I can stop the recording and continue the rest of the action from here. And because, oh, there's too many, <laughs> there's too many uh, NVIDIA logos in the scene now. But essentially, the idea I'm trying to convey is it's going to run each of these actions in order. So you can reorder them, you can create new ones, you can stop them and delete them, and set this up however you want so that it's going to do all the actions you're looking for. Let's go ahead and actually set up this logo placement that I had done earlier in real time here for you. So I'll drag and drop a new image in and I'll create a new action script. Call it logo placement. And it's moved it under the default actions folder. I'm going to drag this um, into the other folder. Oh, can't do that. Okay. That's fine. I'll just make a new one here. Logo placement. Hmm. I'm still recording. Uh, whoops. <laughs> okay, that's my problem. Let's delete that. So yeah, be careful. If you're still recording, then you're going to be recording literally all those actions. And then I would be creating new action scripts because I was recording that. Hopefully that makes sense. So now to make sure that my environment is always going to be the same when I'm placing the logo in the scene here, I'm going to adjust the image size first so that I'm always working in the same image size. And I want my image size to be 1920 by 1080. There's going to be a slight bit of stretching as you noticed, I'm actually changing the ratio. But this ensures that all my images are the same size and the same ratio when they're finalized. So now we've adjusted the image size. I'm going to go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. This is where I do all of my settings for adjusting shadows in the scene, uh, whites, highlights, all this great stuff that you can do in Lightroom as well. And I just want to see what the auto will give me right out of the box without having to adjust all the settings myself. So this already looks pretty good. Maybe it's a little too vibrant for me and I'm going to add some clarity to get a little more crunchiness and contrast and outlines to everything. I'll click OK and it's recorded now the image size and the camera raw filter for me. Now I'll go ahead and drag and drop the NVIDIA logo into the scene and actually this is something I wanted to do later. So I'm going to stop the recording, delete the logo to make sure my environment's the same, and then delete those last two actions, which was place and move. So something I want to do first, let me start the recording again after I've deleted those two layers, is I want to make a nice little placement bar here so that on any image that logo will stand out properly. Now I'm going to change my color to white make a new layer and fill it with alt delete and then I'm going to run a filter motion blur just to get a little bit of edge blur on there like that and then drop the opacity down so it's not so in your face to maybe 30% is good. Now I can go ahead and place the logo into the scene I'll just move this right on top of that nice little bar I made right there. Hit enter. And the last thing I want to do, because this is already pretty good, I'm going to actually save it and make a new folder and call it logo images. And then I'll save this as a JPEG. So you'll see, um, I'm going to change the quality as well because um, 
if it's a 12, it's a little bit too big and we're not going to gain a lot if we're going to be posting this image online. So usually like nine or 10 is good enough for, for posting it online. If it's just for art station or for previewing somewhere. And it's actually even recorded my save on that. So now I can stop. And if I bring a new image into here, I'm going to go ahead and run that script again. And you'll see it resized the image. It added a nice white overlay bar at the bottom there. And it even saved it. So if I go into my logo images here, you'll see we even have a nice saved image from that. And so if I want to add logos to all my images, if I want to adjust the images so that the brightness and contrast are a little bit different and more interesting on the photos, and I know that they're all similar exposure levels and such, I can easily batch process all these photos. Just drag and drop a, a big pile of them in here like this. And something we can do to make it go even faster is I'll go ahead and after these are done loading, it's just bringing them all in real quick. Something we can do to make this even faster is I'm going to go ahead and run the script, make sure all the settings I want are done. It's already saved it for me. And now I'm going to click on the bottom action, hit record and actually close the image and don't save it. So now I'll stop. We see that close is now in the action script as well. I'll select the top layer of the full action script now and hit play. And then this way it just processes everything, saves the image for me and closes it. And now I'm on the next image. I'll hit play again and I can just basically keep hitting play. And now I've processed all the images for my website, for art station, for portfolio, for whatever it is you're trying to make. And this is just one example of placing a logo on there, but just imagine all the possibilities you can have with all the different settings, all the different features, everything you can do in Photoshop and just record all that and just have some fun with it. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, learned something, and you'll be able to get a lot of good use out of this. Take care.